Welcome back to my Amazon selling videos. This week I'm doing a video that is probably my most requested but hardest to shoot, how to pack up an Amazon shipment. So let me just finish unpacking the truck and I'll be right back with you. Some of the stuff is personal items. Okay, so you've probably seen this in some of my other videos, but this is my office, the dining room slide. Because I just brought in all of these uh, bags, they're right here, but generally if I'm bringing them in at night and packing the next day, they'll be like packed back in there overnight. You don't need a lot of space to sell on Amazon. This is literally where everything I use is. So I've got all my scale, my little supplies, my scanning tool all in this little cabinet and I'll show you where I keep the boxes which is outside under the RV but first we have to see what size we need so let me get the scanner out and let's get to work so I'm filming this in November the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want y'all to see what I'm selling so by the time you see this <laughs> this stuff will be sold out and also you can get a feel for what I'm selling for Q4 for the holiday to take price labels off I usually use a hair dryer I did not use a hair dryer in the beginning and it was a pain in the butt so use a heat gun or a hair dryer for labels and a Scotty peeler and they come right off if you want to know what I'm selling right now things start to slow down January February if you want a list of profitable items think about joining my bolo group I'll put the link right here every month we're sharing items that are profitable that have a good rank and that you can find in store right now so check check that out. So to start, you open your Amazon account and click add a product. You don't need a scanner. I also have a link below to all the supplies I use. You do not need a scanner. You could manually enter the UPCs, but the scanner is so much more helpful. So I have a little Christmas napkin. Scan, it comes up. From here you click see detail page just to make sure it's actually the product you want. Currently unavailable, which is great because I'll be the only seller so I can list it at whatever price I want. If you use Keepa and you have the plugin, it'll show up right here and it'll tell you what it was listed at. So $16.50 is the price I'll probably list it at, but I'll see. Normally when I'm scanning in stores and I find something that I had to scan it from a photo, not the UPC, I'll just hit favorite just so I can find it later. From here you just hit create listing, sell yours. My little hack for making SKUs so that I know later on when I'm in my manage inventory how low I can take the price without losing money is I'll do okay I found it from Marshalls $2.99 but I paid tax so let me just calculate that $3.19 so I do MS 319 BE for break even and then I go back to the page and I have the rev seller plugin which is I think it's $99 I'll put the link below I highly recommend it because this is how I use it every time so here you say okay I bought it for 319 I want to sell it for $16.50. So I'll be making $7.58 on every one. What I want to see is a break even price. So I just go back. I'll say, oh, okay, if I sold it for $7.99, almost there. $6.99. I'm trying to get it as close to zero as possible. So I'm going to say $6.99 is my break even price for these. And then Amazon will ship the item for me when it sells. So I'm sending all my inventory because I sell FBA. I'm sending it all in to Amazon. And then when it sells, they will ship it out. So customers get Prime. And if they return it, I don't have to. To deal with the returns which is awesome when you're in an RV and you're all over the place so Amazon's dealing with the return and any other customer service issues that have so now this pops up yes Amazon barcode is fine it's not a dangerous item if it did have a battery you just input the battery information so we say double A and whatever ones it comes with if it just takes batteries but it doesn't come with them then you don't have to put anything ship from a new address I'm adding addresses all the time because I'm changing where I'm at all the time so let me pause here while I look for a UPS store. This is actually a question new sellers have all the time is do you put your own address or like the UPS store? I always, I could do the campground that I'm at, but you can just do the UPS store of where it's shipping from. It doesn't really matter. It just has to be like around where it's shipping from so that Amazon knows which warehouses to send it to. Okay, so I've got the address all put in and now I've created my shipment. You just put in how many units I have. I have to go count them and then you keep going. The difference is, so the first one you're creating a new shipment. From here on out, you're going to be adding to the shipment. So instead of creating new, you just add to shipment the shipment date I'm gonna continue adding all these in and I'll catch you back when it's time to remove the prices so another app I use that I really love is receipt bank it's just an app on your phone this is how you log your receipt take a photo of it you want to make sure the dates in there the date the store and the total take a photo submit and done so now it's all in there it'll figure out where it's from the date and it'll put it all in my file and then I can pull the Excel sheet all right there really handy I also keep 
the receipts handy because sometimes I don't remember what I paid for the thing if it doesn't have a price tag. Like at a regular grocery store, they're obviously not gonna have price tags. So I go ahead and just keep it here. I also can calculate the sales tax. So I'm in North Carolina and it's 7%. So now I have that for when I'm going to input them. My general rule for buying anything is it has to be over $5 because $5 gives you room in case the price should go down. And that's just a good return on most money. I don't really spend over $10 on items. Most of the items I try to buy are $10 or under. Under. There are some clothes and like protein powder where the return is worth it to pay $20 or $15 But in general under 10 I generally price my stuff higher than the buy box and then as it's shipping I check to make sure if the price for whatever reason goes up I change it because nothing is worse than your stuff getting into the warehouse The price has gone from $13.90 to $15.99 But since I put it at $13.90 when I sent it and I never touched it again now mine's gonna sell for $13.90 when I could have having two extra dollars if I had have known so that's just a little tip hopefully that wasn't confusing another way if you've already got product you're just replenning you go to this little button here add product and you search sweet z's yep that's them and just click add and then you'll quickly add this only works for products that you've already sold it does not work for brand new products that you have to enter this item is actually an item that was shared in the bolo group and then i found it and i found six of them and that's awesome because it makes 26 dollars on every single one so that was a great find and I found six of them. So this is where I sit to take the labels off because my hair dryer plugs in right up there and I don't know, it's just comfortable for me to sit here. So the supplies you need are a Scotty Pillar and Goo Gone. So once you get the label off, the Goo Gone takes all that sticky stuff off and then a napkin for the Goo Gone. I've had this bottle almost three years now, so one bottle lasts a long time. Tuesday morning labels, if you don't have a hairdryer or heat gun, are the worst. If you do, they come off really easy. The worst, worst, worst are Burlington. Those are horrible. It has to really be worth it for me to buy it just because of the pain of taking the price tag off. So I've gotten all the labels off. I've gotten everything put in to the system. Some things need poly bags. So anything that is out where you can actually touch the product, it's not hidden in the package. So like this. Totally fine, doesn't need poly bag. Napkins don't need it because already wrapped, but this where I can touch the product, that needs a poly bag so it doesn't get dirty and transport in the warehouse. So I'm gonna go ahead and poly bag these items up. I generally will put the label on first. So I'll put the label on and then the poly bag just so it's on the actual product and it doesn't fall off. So the labels just print on regular little address labels. Where I took the label off is kind of sticky, so I will usually put the label over the barcode, but on this one I'm gonna do the barcode code and cover where the last label was. So that way I don't have to wipe it off because I'm just going to cover it. So I just restocked my poly bag so I get this pack which has four different sizes in it and then sometimes if I'm doing backpacks or things like that I need a bigger bag. Actually this might need a bigger bag. So I'm going to see if it'll fit. I don't think it will but we'll just try. Nope I gotta get a bigger one. Poly bags for Amazon have to have the suffocation warning. So if they don't come with it, you have to have a sticker that you put on it. If this was a bundle and it was two items, so like it's like a bundle of two pans, I just have two pans in the poly bag and then I have a sticker that says this is a set. You put that on there so that Amazon doesn't mistakenly separate it when it gets to the warehouse. So it's ready to go. Let me get the rest of them and we'll see what shipments are going with. Okay, so I have these little clear labels. They're just circles that are clear. For beauty products, you just wanna double check that it's sealed on the inside before you buy it. You should check that. And then I just like to put it on there so that the people really know it's new. And I just have two sizes because sometimes it's a bigger box so you need a bigger label. That and done. Oh, another thing, if you're selling groceries or beauty products that have expiration dates, they have to be 90 days out. I tend to do an added buffer, so at the very minimum it has to be four months out. Speaking of beauty items, if you're a new seller and you're gated and you can't sell brands like Dove, Adidas, Pampers, Huggies, Topicals, Baby Topicals. I have a training for that. It's an ebook which you can grab. Link is below. I've had sellers who just opened their account and a month later they're ungated in all those brands, which a lot of my product are beauty products. If you can't sell it, it really opens it up. I also have a training on how to get ungated for toys. So if you can't sell Star Wars, Lego, uh, Melissa and Doug, Barbie, Mattel, Hot Wheels, Disney, I have another training for that. It helps you get ungated literally step by step so that you can and sell those brands. It really opens the world of what you can find doing retail arbitrage.
package. So I've got everything bagged, labeled, and now we go to the next step where Amazon will tell us where everything goes. If you have smaller shipments, there's an advanced placement you can do so that it doesn't send like one item here, one item there, and then you're basically paying and shipping what you would profit, so it doesn't make sense to do that. So instead, you can ship everything to one warehouse, but they do charge a little bit. I think it's like 40 cents or something for every item because then they're going to ship it to where they need it after that. It looks like my shipment is going almost everything to Charlotte, North Carolina, but I do have one to Virginia and one to Wisconsin. That's smaller units, but it's okay. I have small boxes, so I'll just go ahead and send them there. I'm going to go grab my boxes and then we'll get these things shipped out. So here's where I keep the boxes. It's quite messy, but anytime I get a shipment, I just keep the box. Uh, I also buy boxes at Walmart because they're really cheap. Now watch me dig them out. When I put this in here, I didn't think I was going to be recording. <laughs> I don't have really big stuff, so I think all that one big box will fit in this box, which I got at Walmart because they're only $1.42 for the big box. Definitely shop at Walmart for these. And then I think these Target boxes will fit for the other ones, but if not, I'll be back out here to get more. So how I generally do it is I'll do the two small shipments first, and then I know everything else is going in the big box. I think this one box might work. If you have a lot of stuff, it helps if you have a friend, family member, roommate, whatever, read you off what goes in each box, but since these are small, I can do it on my own. So it does suck if you're sending all your stuff to different warehouses and it's like four things, but the one good thing is that as soon as it hits that warehouse, it's going to be available. If you're doing them all, like my big box is going to one warehouse, that is going to transfer around. So they'll still sell, but they won't be in the buy box because it's going to say like back order. They'll ship in a little bit. If that part of it sucks. It's good that these are going because those will be right away. That looks like it's it. I'm going to just double count. So there should be eight things. Give it a quick count. Yep, it's all good. So for this box, you can see, can you see? I just arrange it as much as I can and then I'll put fill in the air if I feel like it needs it. Honestly, this is all lightweight stuff. It probably doesn't need it. But I will cut this box down to be the height so that it'll fold flat and more condensed and not just like this going everywhere. So this box, you can see how empty it is. It doesn't really have much in it. This one, I will probably throw some air bubbles in just to be safe. The boxes or shipments with more items, better packing than those two other boxes. So I'm going to put the big bulky things on the bottom, the heavy stuff. So Amazon has the whole list for you to go through. So it'll tell me, you know, six of this, four of this. It will ask for expiration dates on some of the stuff. Some of the stuff it won't. So you just put in the expiration date. And then at the end of it, I'll weigh the box and put in the measurements. All right, so everything is in the box. It's a little fluffy because of the air, but I'm going to put a little piece of paper over there. I actually reuse paper bags from the grocery store. I'll rip them up and use them as the padding. So I'll put that over there just so if they cut it, they don't cut the clothing. And yeah, we'll get these puppies weighed and out to the car. Oh, speaking of weighing, one box cannot be longer than 25 inches. The longest side, it has to be under 50 pounds. So if you are over that, you'll get an extra fee from Amazon and a little ding on your thing, which I've had a couple of times. They're just like, don't do that again. 25 is the longest side and can't be over 50 pounds. 49, perfectly fine. Can't be 50. All right, so it says 3811. So I'm just going to call it 39. The other reason I like the Walmart boxes is they have the measurements right on the side. So if you're not cutting them down, you don't have to take a measuring tape and measure them. This 39 pound shipment, because I'm in North Carolina and it's going to North Carolina, it's only going to cost me $7.97 to ship. So if I do $7.97 divided by 66 items, the shipping on this is literally costing me 12 cents. So 12 cents an item. That's pretty good. And plus side, it'll get there like in a day. So that's really it. For the shipping labels, I use these stickers. You can use regular paper and just tape it. I put the stickers on. I usually end up taping them anyways so they don't fall off. You'll get a label, a regular UPS label, and then also what we'll print is a label that's for Amazon FBA. I've only ever had one UPS store ask me what that is, and like they even tried to take it off. I'm like, no, no, that goes to Amazon. Please leave it. So I hope this was a helpful video. I get asked about packing it up so much. Pack it nice, efficient, use padding, use free boxes, use paper bags from the store, use anything to save money and make more profit for you. Let me know what other kind of videos you'd like to see from me. Like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, thank you for watching. <laughs>